And so let's pray. Father, thank you as always for giving us the opportunity to examine your word. We know that um, this is the most important thing for believers in Christ because this is how we are influenced. This is what shapes our thinking that aligns with your thinking. And so help us to focus tonight on the things that we're going to look at tonight. Since the subject is the spiritual life, it's critical that we understand these things from beginning to end. And so as we move through this, we are confident, Lord, that we are being shaped by none other than God, the Holy Spirit. So help us now to lay things aside so that we can focus on Thee. Focus on thy word, because this is vital. This is the most important thing that any believer can do in this life, on this side of eternity, at least, aside from bringing you honor and glory and allegiance as we worship you in spirit and in truth with our lives, which is our reasonable service, according to Paul in Romans 12.1. So we'll just take a moment of silence and exercise 1 John 1, nine if we need to, and then I'll open in prayer. Let us pray. So thank you, Father, for this opportunity once again to gather together with the believers in Christ so that we can know you more through your word. Help us now to focus, and we ask and pray these things in Christ's matchless name. Amen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the text for tonight is... Isaiah 40, 29 to 31. So Isaiah 40, 39 to 31. I'm going to open my Bible because it's always good to have the Bible in front of you, which is the, the sword of the spirit. The scripture says in Ephesians 6, I want us to make some notice some things here. Beginning with verse 29, I'll read it first, and then we'll go back and make some observations. It's a verse that we, it's a passage that we all have heard before, and it's a very important one. In verse 29, it says the following, he gives power to the weak. Another word that we can use for weak is faint, gives power to those who are faint. And he goes on to say, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. So we can see already that uh, we're enjoying this, right? We want the power. We want the strength. Sometimes we feel faint. Sometimes we feel like we have no more energy to go. But the good news is that he gives power. He gives power to those who are faint, to those who have no might. He increases strength, the scripture says. It goes on to say in verse 30, even the youths shall faint and be weary. So if you feel like you're weak and tired, that's okay because the author says, well, by the way, even the young folks, they faint and they will be weary. So that's normal and natural to have those moments where you feel weak and you just don't think you can go on anymore. You're working two jobs, three jobs, one job sometimes, and that just is very taxing already. Or maybe... You're not even working. You may be retired, but you feel tired anyways, right? We all have those days. And so the author tells us, actually from God, since it's his word inspired by the Holy Spirit, the young folks, the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. So there's that toppling over that imagery there that um, they'll eventually fall out of weakness. But then there's a contrast beginning with 31. But those, the word but, there's a very contrastive word. There's a shift in focus. So it goes on from the weak, those with no strength, and even the youth. And there's a shift. But to those who wait on him, to those, I'm sorry, to those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. 
So there's a, some good observation here, some things that stand out. So if you want, just unmute your mic and tell me what you see here. Anything stand out to any of you here? Isaiah 40, 29 to 31. Does anything stand out? Again, this is strictly voluntary. I know some of you don't like to verbalize or say anything because you're more of the kind that just wants me to do all the talking. And so that's perfectly fine too. But you know, as a pastor, sometimes one way that I uh, can see how the value in teaching, uh, not only one-sided, but um, getting people to interact is that's what helps individuals grow. So I, I don't make it a requirement to speak or to open up your videos. Uh, everyone is different. And so, but if you look at the style of Jesus, that's exactly what he was doing in the synagogue. He was there since he was 12. He would interact with the, the rabbis. And so there's this interaction going back and forth. When you look closely at Jesus, there's always questions going back and forth. And they were, at, they were shocked that such a young man, a young boy, can know so much. And so there's this sense that, you know, the interacting there is very helpful for both sides to grow. And Jesus, as a young boy, he was growing still in his stature and the wisdom. We know that he knows all things, but because we're to look at his life, I think that's very important to see as well. So that's why I try to follow the pattern as set forth by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. I, I think interacting is one powerful way to grow spiritually because you'll never know what others can glean or what other people can get from what you say. So that's why, as most of you know, I always open it up so that you can contribute and say something that you might see that others may have seen too, or maybe they haven't seen as well. And then that steam stimulates everyone's thinking. You know, that's the, the idea of iron, iron sharpening iron, as the scripture says. Having said that. Pastor if, Freddie, I, yeah. I do have uh, a question on the verse 29. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. It says, he gives power to the weak and to those mm -hmm. who have no might. Aren't mm -hmm. they the same or how are they different? He gives power in verse 29. He gives yeah. power to the weak and to those who have no might. Well, there's this sense that the, the weakness has more to do with, uh, I think there's some, the inner workings of a man. So there's the inner strength and then there's the physical strength. Because you see that he also talks about the young men who fall. But then when it shifts to 31, those who wait. There's this patience that's required, the mental strength that's required, because sometimes we fail, we give up, we're exhausted, but a lot of our fatigue and tiredness comes from here in the thinking. Where are you, Lord? Why are you not here? Why are you not answering my prayer? So I think there's the inner strength that's being communicated here and the physical strength as seen with the young men who fall those who are obviously stronger than those who are not youth anymore. So you see the physical strength and then those who are impacted by those who are no longer waiting. And that's why Isaiah talks about renewing their strength. Those who wait on the Lord. You see that there, Susan? There's this, sometimes yes. we don't want to mm -hmm. wait, right? We get so impatient. And when we're impatient, sometimes that, that's what robs us from our strength. And so there's this inner quality of patience, which is what we've learned in James 1, count it all joy, because in the end, you know that it's the testing of your faith, which produces what? Endurance, which is another word for patience. And in here, I think what we're seeing in Isaiah is the exact same thing. The answer to our, a lot of our troubles that are many times involving our physical strength requires us not to move around, not to be anxious, not to be impatient, but instead to what? Wait. Wait on who? The Lord. 
So right there, we see that there's a focus. For, for, it goes from physical strength to now the real solution. And what's the real solution to getting the power that we need to soar like eagles, to be able to run, to be able to walk? The physical strength is sometimes affected by the fact that we're no longer patient. And so when we're agitated, as clearly seen in Luke 10, remember the story of Martha and Mary? Martha was so upset at Jesus because he, she told him, tell my sister to come help me. And remember that story, Susan, where he says, well, your sister Mary chose that good part. What was Mary doing? Listening, waiting, waiting on the Lord, sitting there, listening to his words, resting at his feet. Many times that's really the antidote to life's problems. Now, I, I'm aware of the fact that we all have different challenges in life, uh, you know, different chapters, right? We all have gone through numerous things. And so we, I'm sure, can say, well, yeah, but... I have this going on. I have that going on. Something back here is also going on. And so, you know, I can't just wait. I just can't wait on the Lord. I got to do something. I, I'm, I'm of age now. And I have to get this, 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 and this done before I turn 65 or whatever. So we have to see that God's answers usually go contrary to what we're thinking. We're thinking we ought to do this. God is saying, no, you wait. Wait on me, wait on me. And then you couple that with the New Testament passages where it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Completely different to what the world system would say. The world system would say, go for the gustos, get all you can. It's only one life. He who dies with the most toys wins. So I think what we're seeing here, Susan, is you see the inner quality. That inner quality is upset and disturbed when it goes contrary to what we think we ought to be doing. And what God says we ought to be doing is being still, waiting. You see in the Old Testament, especially, the idea of being still. You see Moses, when con conversing with God, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And so in Isaiah, wait. And when you go through the rest of it, it's very, very persuasive here. He gives power to the weak. So we know that he's talking about the strength and those who have no might, this weakness, this, this um, strength that I believe is internal, to those who have no might, he increases strength. So I think that's related to physical and the youths even faint and be weary. So he's contrasting it now with those who are no longer considered um, youth. They get, they get faint hearted and they become weary. So there's the physical aspect. The young men, they shall utterly fall. So again, their legs are collapsing. Why? Because they eventually will become weak as well. But then those who wait, that's why I said there's this inner quality, this inner strength that comes from waiting, inner strength that comes from being dependent upon God, because he tells us, ho, 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 wait, slow down. I'm in charge here. I'm, in, I'm the sovereign Lord here. I know best. I'm all powerful. You're not. These young folks they will get weary. They will get tired. They will even buckle over and fall. And he says, so if that's true, then listen closely at my words. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. And that's been something I've been really championing this, this whole year thus far, paying attention to every word. And every word that comes up here is those who wait. So it's a cessation of movement, a cessation of any kind of activity. And oh boy, that, that hits all of us right between the eyes. What do you mean wait? What do you mean stop moving? I got to keep going. I'm busy body. I got to, I'm just nine to five, not all day, 24 seven. I've got to keep moving. I got to keep doing this, 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 and this. And God says, hold on. 
That's part of the reason why you're tired because you don't know how to wait. You don't know how to trust me because if you did, not only will you be able to get things done, but you're going to have power that comes from me and you're going to be able to have might in, you're going to have increased strength. And he goes on to say, um, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like, like eagles. You're not going to be an eagle, but you'll be a lot movement. Uh, you'll have the, the sense of being moving with grace, moving with strength, gliding and just being able to move through gracefully. That's the idea that I'm getting here. Gracefully, beautifully. And this idea of mounting up uh, with wings like eagles. But then here's the interesting thing. The tail end of 31. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk. Now it goes from running to walking. There's a downshift here from fifth gear to third gear. Not only can you run and not be weary, you're going to be able to walk and not be, not, you'll walk and not faint. So running, walking, God says, you're going to be fine. Whether you're the running kind of person or the walking kind of person, you're going to be fine. Why? Because you've learned the secret to waiting on me and exchanging your weaknesses for my strength. And this is kind of likened to what uh, God said to Paul in 2 Corinthians, remember 12? My grace is what? Sufficient. Power is perfected in weakness. Paul was complaining, take this thorn away, take this thorn away from me. Three times, and God said, no, that's where you're going to shine, Paul. My power is perfected in your weakness. And so you see the Bible is replete. It's gems that are tucked away in these verses. And I know we've seen this before, but that's why I wanted to pull this out because we all can use this. But the answer really is in verse, where is it? 31. So I'm going to cheat and uh, go to the top of the list here. Top, top of the line. So now I'd like to ask any of you, but. The answer is verse 31 for us. But any thoughts on anyone here? Just unmute your mic and tell me what you think. Do you see anything here? He gives power to the weak, those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, meaning tired. The young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not get tired. They shall walk and not faint. So you see all of these things here related to physical strength. But again, I think part of the internal strength that's missing with some of these people who are reading this, the recipients of this letter, is the fact that they're not willing to wait. And you know anybody who's impatient, you're looking at a person who is going to be tired. If they're not already tired, it's just a matter of time. Or maybe they put so much makeup and they put so much perfume and cologne so they look like they're fresh and everything's fine. But at home, they're like this. They're tired. Why? Because they're a worry wart. They're tired, not because they're physically tired, because mentally they're taxed because of this, that, and the other. And what does God say? Those who wait, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, right? Right? So anyone have any thoughts on 29 to 31? Let me know what you see here. It's very One of my favorite passages now that I've seen this because I can use the strength. I certainly can use the strength. So I've been really appreciating this passage here. Anyone? It seems like with the, to wait mm -hmm. would, would require me to trust him. <laughs> That's right. Because if you don't wait, you you want to do things your own way. That's completely right. right. You don't and want to wait. Him, it, it helps knowing who he is. So knowing God's word and knowing who he is and how he does things. Right. Helps my, my trusting and that helps my waiting. Yes. Very good. Very good. So if you don't want to wait, 
it's because you're not so trusting anymore, right? So unless you're trusting him and you know his word, you know his doctrine, so that you can be encouraged to trust him, you're going to be a, a weak person. You're going to be very, very fatigued, as clearly seen in this passage. You're not going to be able to renew your strength. You might be able to get away with a couple cups of coffee, but you're still not going to have the strength that um, is definitely supernatural, according to what I'm seeing here, because this is all coming from him. It's a strength that comes from him. He's going to give you strength. You're going to renew your strength. You're going to mount up like wings with, uh, with wings like e eagles, run and not be weary. Who can say such a thing? Only God. So how does that look like, practically speaking? We probably know people who are really grounded in God and his word, trusting in him. Maybe you know someone who's really mature in the faith and you, you know they've been in the a ministry for many of years and they're out now in uh, the tribes and serving uh, third world countries and they're just nonstop, keep going and keep going. They're missionaries, they love the Lord, they just keep going, going, going and hiking many of miles to find that lost soul. We know people like that. And I think this is a reflection of the kind of strength that God is supplying them because they do wait on the Lord. And when they're delayed for whatever reasons, they always look at that and say, okay, God is saying something. We're going to wait on the Lord. We're going to renew our strength as we trust him. So as the doors open up, we know that we're going to be able to move forward. I kind of think of Robbie Dean, who went to Ukraine uh, not too long ago. And he was, he was in all sorts of things that he was able to see there. And it was just... Uh, all has to be through the orchestration of God's will, God's plan, because he was there when all sorts of nasty things were taking place. And he said, if it weren't for God, he probably wouldn't be here right now. So a lot of the hesitations, a lot of the delays, sometimes the airplanes are delayed for whatever reason, and it turns out to be a blessing in disguise. How many times have you heard that before? It's really a blessing in disguise. Well, you can see that sometimes, even when we have to wait, it's not an issue of renewed strength. Sometimes it's a part of God's orchestration, orchestration and saving you from something dangerous, saving you from a car accident, saving you from something where you could have been exposed to someone who had some kind of disease. There's all sorts of things. If you listen to, like, for example, um, you know, uh, 9-11, when the towers went down, it's such a tragedy, right? You hear people who would sit there and they would be interviewed and they said, you know, I was supposed to be on that plane. And for whatever reason, I was stuck in traffic and I was so irate that I was going to miss my plane. And then when we got there, we found out that the towers went down and I said, oh, my Lord, I was supposed to be on that plane. And if I would have gotten on that plane at that time, I would have been there at work or that appointment, that conference, and I would have been down with those people, those thousands of people in those Twin Towers. And you hear of all the, you can hear it in their voice, they're terrified, they're scared, they're emotional. They said, that should have been me. I was supposed to be there. And I missed my plane and someone was watching over me. They, some of them said God. Some of them also said, well, someone. They didn't want to say God, but we all know who that was. It was God who was watching that person. And so they sat there and said, on, as they were being interviewed as a survivor of those who were not in the, the Twin Towers at the time that they were supposed to be there, they were saying, oh, I can't believe I escaped death. I can't, I can't believe that I wasn't there. And so likewise, when we think of waiting on the Lord, we only, if we look at this, we're thinking, oh, I, yeah, I want strength. I want power. I want to be able to run and not be weary. I want to be able to walk and not faint. Yeah, that would be awesome. God supplying me energy. But you also have to think outside of the box because sometimes God is using your situation for different reasons. Think, for example, of, the disciples and the life of Lazarus. 
remember um, word got to Jesus that the person that he loved was sick. Uh, well, his friend was sick. And so the disciples said, well, if he's sick, he'll get better. And, but Jesus knew the scripture, you look closely at the word Jesus knew. And he says, we'll, we'll go there. And then he said, oh, our friend sleeps. But Jesus knew that he didn't sleep. He knew that he, he died already, but that was supposed to be a teaching opportunity for his own disciples who were with him. His life Lazarus's life was designed in eternity past to be a teaching opportunity for his disciples who were with him. Imagine that. His life, Lazarus' life, eventually he died. And so Martha and Mary are devastated that their brother passed. And so, but to Jesus, he said, oh, he's just sleeping. And he said, Lord, he's been there four days. He stinketh by now. And he said, where'd you bury him? And you know the rest of the story. Lazarus come forth. So boom, he comes out. It's a teaching opportunity for his disciples who are there with him. At the same time, he gives a splendid sermon to Martha. He who believes in me, though he die, he shall live. He who believes and is alive shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, I do. <clears throat> And then he goes and says, I am the resurrection and the life. So you have this beautiful picture of how Jesus uses circumstances to be a teaching opportunity for those around him. So when we look at this passage, we might be focusing on the strength, 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 and rightfully so, because that's what it's talking about. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. But I'm throwing in another angle here. Sometimes he uses the different circumstances to bring attention to either the person or the people around the person to teach them something. So this is focused on waiting on the Lord so that they can have strength. I think that's internal strength because we have a tendency not to be patient, not to wait, but to do, do, do go, 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 nonstop. And so, like you said, Karen, I really believe that you have a lot of truth and it's loaded, it's pregnant with meaning there. We have to learn how to wait. Uh, the only way we can wait is if we trust him. And the only way we can trust him is if we have doctrine, if we have his word stored up. But if we don't, it's going to be hard to trust him. And if it's hard to trust him, there's no way we're going to be able to wait. We just are that we're not like that by nature. So great observation, Karen. Anybody else have anything else to see, say regarding this passage here? And that word wait. Have, oh yeah? I have a question, but when everybody else has a chance to, to talk. Okay. Anybody else? Well, maybe I covered it thoroughly. That sometimes happens. So my question is, um, this Isaiah is in the Old Testament. Right. So this is something that can be done by those believers who did not have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Right. So for us being in the church age, given how much we've been given, even more we should be able to do this. That's correct. Right. That's right, because we already start with God, the Holy Spirit. Here in the Old Testament dispensation of the law, those who were trusting in God, believing in God, would many times get the endowment of God, the Holy Spirit. So he would empower individuals when they were cooperating to his word. So when they would go positive and listen to God and his word, then they would be blessed with either power, creativity, sometimes visions, the ability to interpret dreams, all sorts of different things that the Holy Spirit would bring upon individuals who would cooperate with God in this work. But we should have the advantage because now for the very first time in the church age, the dispensation of the church age, which is now post Acts chapter two, post the birth of church, the church, we now have the indwelling of God, the Holy Spirit. 
we start off with horsepower. We start off with the power of God because he indwells us. God the Father indwells us. God the Son indwells us. God the Holy Spirit indwells us. And so when you have that kind of power available, that's hard to beat. Now, when you couple that with the promises of God, the mandates of God or the principles of God, then God honors that as well. So not only do you have God's empowerment through his, the triune God, but when you cooperate with the promises of God, he still honors that. So if you wait upon the Lord, you're, you're being compliant with his word. You're obeying God. And so that will be, that, this will become a reality in your life. So if you're in need of strength, if you're in need of supernatural power, you link that with Philippians, uh, 2 Corinthians 12, I believe it's 12, where Paul is talking to God um, and God says, no, my grace is sufficient. I'm not going to remove that thorn. That irritant in your life, your physical body is exactly what I want you to experience. I want you to experience weaknesses. I want you to experience this because if not, you're going to get big headed. If you look at the opening of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, the reason why he was given this thorn is spelled out in the opening of 12. It was because he had visions. He had access to information. So he, he could have got big headed. That's the sense that you get in chapter 12, 1, 2, and 3, I think. And so God gave him that thorn to keep him humble. It's very interesting when you look at the passages word by word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's exactly what's going on there. Paul could have got big headed and went around and said, guess what I know? And he could have just boasted. I mean, he's already he had reason to boast as a Jew. But now that he's converted, he had this irritant, this physical ailment. Some say it was an eye issue. Whatever it is, we know that. Um, Paul pleaded three times. And God said, no, 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 you need that. Otherwise, you're going to get you're going to get arrogant and boastful because of what you receive from me. So not only are you going to get what you get from me, but I'm going to show you that in your weakness, my power is made manifest. So hang in there. You're going to be fine. Just ride it out. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. And he did. He penned 13 books of the New Testament, all on account of just trusting in God. Truly, his grace is sufficient. So this passage is very encouraging because, like you said, Karen, even though this is Old Testament, dispensation of the law, we can benefit from this physically speaking because if we're cooperating with his word, we get what it says here. And what do we get? We get strength. We mount up like with wings like eagles. We will run and not be weary. Now, I'm not suggesting you join a marathon just to test it out. The idea here is that I think there's a strength that when we are trusting and depending on God, there's a renewedness of strength that isn't easily seen when we're not waiting. And so that's the key. That's the connecting point from 29 to 31. I think we have to wait. That's the key. That's where we, that's where we fall apart. We're not one to wait very easily. We don't want to wait. We're in the traffic. We want to get past the traffic, right? We want to cut people off because we don't like to sit in line. We're in the uh, we're in the restaurant. We want our we want our meal, right? Waiter, waiter, we've been waiting here four minutes already. Where's my server? You know, we're we're just very impatient. We're living in a world where it's instant gratification. You know, so even internet speed. You remember back in the days in the eighties, ninety four uh, baud. I think Deacon Steve will remember this. The uh, internet speeds were 3,300 baud, 9,400 baud. I mean, it was those were the speeds of the day. Now we have T1 connection, cable. We have um, DSL connection. We have all these kind of connections. And some of you probably don't remember the internet back in the 80s. Maybe you do where you would just sit there and have to hear a dial tone. It will dial. You have to use a CD, um, AL, AOL. You slap in the CD or Juno, slide that in and Netscape. You remember all those? And then you would you hear the dial up. You're, you'd have to have a modem on your computer. 
it'll dial, dial, dial. And sometimes it's a busy tone. You have to redial re again, redial again. And the speed was like a tortoise. But now we couldn't, we couldn't get by with that. If our, if our internet speed was like, if we had to hear that every time we would dial up, we'd probably chuck our computer across the room. Oh, what's going on with this? In fact, let me ask you this. How many of you get frustrated when you can't open a window because you have three or four other windows going on and you see this wheel spinning in the screen? You're like, what in the world is going on? Why is this so slow? And this wheel is turning and turning and turning and you just sit there and do I have to restart the computer again? And then you complain to anybody in the house. How many of you are using the Wi-Fi? Get off now so I can get on the internet. You remember those days? Maybe it's still happening for some of you, but you get so irritated. Why? Because we don't like to wait. But when it comes to God, we must learn how to wait because he's always at the right time, at the right place, anytime, any moment. He's never behind. He does things at pinpoint accuracy. His timing is superb. It's precise. When you came into this world, that's the perfect time to come in. When your parents gave birth to you, that's exactly what he had in mind, eternity past. When Jesus Christ was born, that was the perfect and appointed time for him to enter into this world. So everything is done with pinpoint accuracy under the influence of a sovereign, omniscient God who loves you and loves me. And by the way, this passage, we didn't even get into the study yet. I'm not sure. Let me see where. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get into this study. Maybe we will. I just want to see how far we're going to get with just this passage. But all the same, just know that he had all of us in mind. He knew that we would be in this particular day and age talking the way that we're talking, studying the way that we're studying, looking at each other online, recognizing that we're living in a, in a point in time where it is the most exciting of all because we are the only ones in this age and no age is going to have what you and I have. We're the only people that is part of this, what's called the spiritual species. We're a new creation in Christ. And because of our relationship to Christ via faith, we have been adopted into the royal family of God. We have spiritual assets. We have all these advantages that, that no one else has because we're believers in Christ. There's millions of people, billions of people, 7 billion people on this earth. Small percentage of the people on this earth have what you and I have, namely rapport with God spiritual advantages because of the divine nature that you have in you you have the father son and holy spirit i know that's second hand news already i know that you know that yeah no big deal but the truth is it is a very big deal because the fact that you have this divine nature because you have god the father god the son god the holy spirit in you you must remember that your worst problem has been dealt with and as such, you don't have any real problems if you think about it. Your worst problem has already been handled by the Father up above who loves you. He has turned his back on his son so that by faith in his son, you now have a relationship with God the Father. For the very first time, you have access to him via prayer and you have access to God the Holy Spirit who is the horsepower in this world who now takes residence in you and is allowing you to have this peace that surpasses all understanding, answered prayer, just we, as we've seen in James chapter five, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And just as James had a hum human nature like ours, he was able to pray that it would rain, pray that it would not rain three and a half years. You see this in James. And it's the idea there is if you are righteous, and it's a righteousness that, that has been transferred or imputed to you at the moment of faith, you have the capacity to go cry out to Fa God the Father and say, I need help. I need, uh, I need to be able to mount up with wings like eagles. 
I need to run and not be weary. I need to, I need to be able to walk. I need to be able to go to work and not be faint because I'm just feeling really weak lately. I'm not sure if I could walk these days and not faint. That's how weak I am. But if you go to God and say, Lord, I'm not sure how I'm going to make this work. But in fact, it, it looks like based on the passage here, it's not about me making it work. It's about you supplying the power, you supplying the horsepower. I've already got a head start because of you're indwelling in me, your son's indwelling in me, God, the Holy Spirit indwells in me. All I have to do now looking at this passage is to wait. And in fact, every instance, the majority of the times where we're told that we can have this requires waiting. Has a, There's always this sense, this um, element or component of waiting. But sometimes it's waiting while we're active. What I mean, what do I mean by that? Well, he causes all things to work together for good to those who love him. So as you're loving him, you're taking verses like this where you're waiting upon him while at the same time you're proactive obeying him. If you love me, obey me. So there's this proactiveness while at the same time waiting. We call this faith rest. We're resting in him as we're exiting. Uh, executing faith in his word. So I'm executing faith in his word. The doctrine is found in front of us. I'm going to learn how to wait on you, Lord. And as I'm waiting, I'm still going to be obeying. Jesus said, if you love me, don't forget me, obey me, John 14, 15. So obeying him is much more than just going to church, much more than just turning your computer on, going to the Bible classes. It's also about obeying him. What does it mean to obey? Well, when was the last time you loved your fellow brother or sister in Christ? When was the last time you did good? He who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. So when you are, you're hitting these, you're missing these bullseye, you're in sin, which is why we have to confess those things. When we know to do something, I'm, I should be helping here, I should be doing this. But you say, ah, well, maybe next week, maybe tomorrow, maybe, you know, next time. I'll do it next time. Usually there's no next time because we're creatures of habit, right? We procrastinate. It's our, in our nature. We don't want to do things when we can put it off for a day or two. And so it never gets done. And I've said this before. We tend to just push it off. And then when we say we're going to do it tomorrow, next week, next month. It just never gets done, which is why I've been exhorting you all, get busy now. Get on the ball, get on the horn, advance the cause of Christ, because time is of the essence. So anybody else on this passage? I'm going off on a rabbit trail now. I'm going to start preaching a different message. So anybody else? Uh, let me read it here just so you can let it take it in your ear gate. He who gives power to, he gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. That's nice, right? Even the youth shall faint and be weary. They so say, look, even, even the young folks are going to get weak and they're going to faint. And the young men shall utterly fall. So there's this collapsing because they get weak and they will eventually fall. But those who wait on the Lord or God shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So again, look at your eyes in 31. The one who's going to be able to is the one who's going to be able to uh, mount up and run and walk and not. Uh, anybody? Have, it sounds like someone is going to jump on. Yeah, that's yes. Hi, Dave. Hi. Oh, to this message, mm -hmm. what I find, and I've seen it in our church, um, when you, you're serving him, mm -hmm. somehow you don't get tired. Yeah. You know, you just keep going and you don't feel tiredness. You, that's what I find. That's what I found and I've seen it through. Yeah, very good. So, yeah, I've seen it uh, with Karen, uh -huh. uh, Tess. Yeah. Uh, Jasmine. Yeah. Uh, uh, who's that? Winston. <laughs> the one we have. 
Yeah. So and then they they even do the work with um grace or cheerfully. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So um so this you, is good. <laughs> it is. I, I this is kind of a reminder that when you're seeing people, Theta, that, that's why I said earlier, those if you know anyone who's in the faith, especially those who are mature. They just keep going, going, going. They don't seem to stop because for whatever reason, and I think this is part of what we're seeing, you've made some good observations on those who are going because they're getting this renewed strength when otherwise they should stop and be tired. But yeah, I, I agree with you, Theta. We've got a handful of people who are just constantly moving. And I think part of the reason is because they do wait. They are trusting in what God says here. And even, here's the beautiful thing about this. Even if they don't see this verse and they're not reminded, I mean, look at what it says. Ladies and gentlemen, please look at what it sells, says. But those who wait on the Lord, they're the ones who's going to have their strength. Uh, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. Does it say anywhere here that those who study this verse and passage, they will renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not be faint? Does it say anywhere that it says those who study this passage, they're the ones who's going to have strength, they're the ones who are going to mount up with wings like eagles, run and not be weary, walk and not faint? It's not there. Why? Because this principle is a principle that will apply to those who know how to wait, those who are not going to be easily frustrated, those who by nature or by application of doctrine. Because it's kind of like saying, if they don't know it's a sin and they do it, is it still a sin? Of course. If they, if they, the people in this passage here, if they don't know this passage, Will God honor them for those who are waiting on the Lord, those who are trusting in him, those who are dependent upon him? Is God going to honor this principle in their life? Yes. And in fact, that's why I said earlier, you can usually, usually see this in the person or individuals who are grounded and have a strong relationship with God. They know how to, for example... They know how to take things with stride. Okay, there's a problem. Bang. Okay, Lord, that's part of your plan. That's a part of your, it's your responsibility. You have to take care of it. It's not my job. Vengeance belongs to you. And so they've, they've learned throughout the years, throughout their time with God, they've learned how to trust God. So it becomes a lifestyle. So now their Christian walk, their spiritual walk, is one of dependence, one of not in a hurried fashion, not in a frustrated passion. Lord, you said this. Why are you not doing this? They've learned to be relaxed. They've said, okay, well, oh, that's a tough one. And even without defaulting to this, they don't say, well, didn't you say those who wait on the Lord? I think they're probably... They have enough doctrine stored up inside where they might have some favorite go-to verses like, well, you did say count it all joy when you encounter trials. So, all right, I know that there's a purpose behind this. And as they're drawing from those passages, those verses that they have inculcated throughout the years, what are they doing? They're waiting on the Lord. Maybe they're not saying I'm waiting on the Lord, but that's exactly what's happening. So when they're saying, well, you said count it all joy when you encounter trials. So that moment, that instant, are they not waiting on the Lord at that point? They paused and said, hmm, I wasn't expecting that. But Lord, maybe there is a purpose. Maybe it's for me to gain more patience, more endurance. So they took a pause and instead of letting it get to the best of them and say, well, why, why did you do that? I'm, uh, have I not served you? Have I not done this? Am I not serving you in this capacity? Don't I help out in the church? And instead of reacting, they're saying, well, 
okay, your word says to count it all joy. So I'll just count it all joy, knowing that there's um, something behind this. Uh, you're developing patience and endurance in my life. And at the same time, maybe this verse is not coming to mind at that moment, but because they're drawing from other promises, they all interlock. They all interlock with all the promises and principles that are true from God's perspective and from the biblical perspective. So when you apply one verse, one principle, and you hang on to that and say, Lord, I don't understand what's going on, but you did you not say you cause all things to work together for good to those who love them? And then they, they take a pause, they rest, they faith rest. Then they're like, okay, I'm just going to trust that you're going to cause all things to work together for good. They're now waiting on the Lord, folks. They just took a moment to exhale the verse, the promise that they know to be. See? Yes, no. What's that, Ruben? Oh. Oh, Ruben. Sorry, sorry, Pastor. Okay. Sorry, Pastor. I, I... Yeah. yeah, okay. But um, so hopefully you guys can see that. I, I know I said a lot there. Hopefully that makes sense. You are actually waiting on the Lord as you are pausing, as you're recalling the promises of God. So you're actually waiting on him. Because in what would happen if you didn't call out that verse, recall that verse, apply that verse? Well, now you're going to be in reactive mode. And when you're reacting, you're no longer waiting. You're no longer civil. You're no longer stable. You're all over the place. And now you're beyond waiting. You're not even waiting. And what's happening? You're fainting. You're, on the mo you're about to faint. You're about to fall. You're not mounting up like with, uh, with wings like eagles because you're discouraged, you're down, you go to bed, you just want to sleep, close the door, hide under a pillow. That's your way of waiting. But the scripture way, way of waiting is to wait on him. And you will not be able to, you're not going to be weary, you're not going to faint. All of this is a part of a principle. This is not something that that is just going to um, pop out at you right at the moment of your crisis. Now, it's better that you have this inculcated in your soul, in the back of your mind, or highlighted or underlined in your Bible, so that when you are going through hardship, you can certainly say, well, I need strength. You can draw from here, 2 Corinthians 12. You link, link those together. And Paul said this, Lord, and God said, my grace is sufficient. And then here you see the sufficiency that comes from waiting, simply waiting. God said, my grace is sufficient, power is perfected in weakness. So Paul, um, Paul had to grapple with weakness. Paul would experience the sufficiency of his grace, but it was exchanged only during Paul's times of weakness. So that is a different context. But nevertheless, it's similar because here we're told, look, if we feel like we're going to pass out, we feel like we're going to faint, we feel like we're going to fall you don't have any strength anymore? Well, why don't you wait? That's, the, that's the, the condition here for those of us who want to apply this verse. Wait on him. It's only when you wait where you get to experience 29 to 31. And by the way, I wrote this down because it's one of those words that um, we should be familiar with. Kava in uh, 31. You see that word? 30. If, um, those who wait, that word, Hebrew word is kava, and it's probably the strongest Hebrew word for faith. The idea here is, I wrote it down because it was something that I had on one of my papers. It's, it's a beautiful explanation of, um, let's see if I can find it now. It has to do with uh, rope. It's this idea of... of um, in the ancient world, especially during this time, it's indeed, it's associated with the process of making a rope. Have you ever felt a nice thick rope? Probably when you're in the docks where there's a lot of boats, you have this rope that's really, really thick. 
And so the idea is in the ancient world, ancient times, making a rope involved twisting and braiding strands together to create a strong cord. And that's the idea here with that word um, kava. And that's the word right in verse 31, right in front of you to, for weight, kava. And it's this idea of just waiting and this strengthening that comes from God as we wait on him. And when we wait on him, that's the point of contact where we will renew, God will renew our strength. We'll mount up like wings, like eagles, run and not be tired or weary, walk and not faint. So another thing that I point notice here, and I, I happen to write this on my Bible. And let me see if I could read it. Uh, I used to write really, really small. In verse 31, I'm glad I, I kept this. I have the same Bible in newer newer condition but i have so many notes in my my bible that i've kept since let me see if i, I think it was 91 i've accumulated a lot of notes throughout the years that's why i don't like to throw this but you see the word weight on 31 aside from that hebrew word that i told you pastor a pastor yes susanna Susanna? Uh, yes, the, while, uh, yes, Pastor, uh, while you're looking for that word weight, I have just this uh, thought in my mind. Okay. When we say weight, should I wait on bended knees? Or should I wait while see, uh, or should I sing while I wait? Or should I sit while I wait? Or what does weight mean? It's a big patient on the Lord. Waiting on him. And it's the idea of inactivity because we have a tendency to keep moving. We, when we keep moving and we're not waiting, see the connecting here, the connection is wait on the Lord. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to sit down or have a particular posture. It's the cessation of movement. So long as you're waiting on him, the posture is, is not what's important here. It's our inner condition. It's our mental attitude. It's waiting on God. And so we have a tendency to not wait on God. We want to do things rapidly. Now, if you're the singing kind, you certainly can. But here's what I'm going to say, Susanna. Some people, they're not natural singers, and so they won't sing. So, for example, me, I'm not much of a singer, okay? If I started to sing, you guys would probably turn your computers off. And so, so I'm not normally a singer. So what I would tend to do is, for example, if I'm going to wait on the Lord, that means I'm going to go about my daily activities waiting on him. I'm not going to put on a sour face so it'll draw attention to myself. I'm just going kind of like the... Um, the person who's fasting in Matthew 5 says, if, if you're going to fast, make sure you oil your hair, you oil your face so that you won't draw attention to yourself so that no one knows that you're fasting. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing when you're giving, when you're praying, don't pray with uh, many words. So people will see you and say, Oh, what a, what a um, holy person he is. She is. And so the idea here is to wait on him, go about my understanding based on what I know from scripture, uh, Susanna, is go to work, go to school, teach your class. But if you have something that's gut wrenching and very difficult, that's when you're waiting on the Lord. You go about your daily affairs and trust him. You don't have to let people know. Does that make sense? You don't have to let everyone know that you're going through a big problem. The only one who has to know is God, right? So you don't have to huh? Yes, Pastor. I okay. So hopefully that makes sense. You, you wait on the Lord and you do that 
by doing going about your daily affairs, what you normally do each and every day. So if I'm going to trust God for, for example, my health, let's say I had a, a problem with my heart again, I'm not going to draw attention to myself by posting on Facebook, oh, you know, pray for me. You know, I got the, don't worry about me. It's all the Lord. The Lord has this. I'm really drawing attention to myself. Now, there could be times where you have to share a little bit just for whatever reason. Maybe there are people who are already praying. And so sometimes an update from time to time would be, I think, appropriate. But when you go out and just blast everything to everyone, I think that's going a little too far. The idea in the sense that we see in scripture is that it's, an, it's a matter between you and God. You wait for him, go about your daily affairs, and God's going to take care of you. He's going to supply you with strength. He's going to allow you to run. He's going to allow you to walk. And the, the, what, how I see that word walk is you're going to, let me see. I, the idea is keep moving. So you'll be able to run and not be weary. You'll be able to walk and not faint. And that word walk has the sense of moving. So I would read it like this in the bottom of 31. They'll, those who wait will be able to mount with wings like eagles. They'll be able to run and not be weary. And they'll be able to move and not be faint. So that's, again, that idea that you keep going, what you, do what you're normally doing every day. And God will supply that energy that you need so that you won't faint. So as, if you got like a major crisis on your mind, on your heart, in your family's life, go about your business and say, Lord, I'm going to wait on you. I'm trusting in you. I need the strength to be able to go with my daily affairs at school. I'm a teacher. I need to be able to fulfill my responsibilities because I'm taking care of my family. We have this income that we're depending on. So I'm just going to wait on you to take care of me. And so as you go to work, as you trust him, he's going to supply 31, 30, 31B, where you can run and not be weary, walk and teach without fainting, because he's now supplying you the strength, a renewed strength as you're waiting on the Lord. Hopefully you were able to hear me, Susanna, and, and I, I always send you the um, audio anyway, so hopefully that makes sense. I know you're... Um, Connection isn't always that good. So I, I will send you a copy of this, by the way. Hopefully that makes sense. But anybody else like to add to 29 to 31? Any observations as I was talking for the last hour or so? Uh, you know, Actually, it's... Go ahead. Okay. It's, it, it is very true that uh, we wait. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are, there's some certain time that the request that we're asking, we know we have to wait. Mm -hmm. But that's the certain time that if it is so long, right. our, our, our flesh is starting to work on us to yep. do what we want to do. Right. And we go, I've been waiting for a long time. But the, the process there, you're waiting, mm -hmm. but what you're seeing is like the answer, but it's not the answer of God. Right. So you take it, mm -hmm. but in in that moment, you know that it's it's not God. It's your own decision. It's your flesh. Mm -hmm. So you're partial. Yeah. So what? Sometimes we do, we gamble. Lord, I've been waiting. <laughs> so yeah. let me gamble. Yep. But when you do that, there's a consequence. There really and is. You will experience the consequence. Mm -hmm. And the and and the good thing. And the good thing because God promised that He's gonna not, not gonna leave us. He's gonna pull you back in that trouble right. because you already disobey. Now you recognize that you sin against the Lord. So you confess it. And yep. now you wait. And then the waiting is being given to you 
more than enough that you could say, thank you, Lord. It's already too much that I requested you gave me double. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Very true. Yeah, thank you. And I think they yeah. say something too. Data, are you there? Data, were you trying to say something before Rudy? Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. That's okay. I'm about to run a battery. Okay, hold on. Okay. The, the word mm -hmm. is wait on. Mm -hmm. You wait on. That means serve the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Serve the Lord. Isn't that that wait on? Well, uh, no. I no, I, the idea here is to cease. And it's the idea oh. of cessation from instead of waiting, you wait on him. Oh, yeah. it's literally that. Wait. Okay. You, you wait for, it's kind of like if I send you a letter in the mail, you have to wait for it. Right? Okay. Okay. Sometimes the time is longer than we would expect or what we would want. So we are told don't worry about the timing, just wait on the Lord. So if we wait on him, it's the waiting because we're now compliant with his word. He then supplies us with renewed strength. And when we get that strength, it's going to be seen by the ability to uh, mount up with wings like eagles. So the idea there is that we're going to be able to soar above our circumstances as if it's not there, just like an eagle can go around with no problems, navigate around the things, see from a different perspective, have a sense of strength and beauty. Because when you look at an eagle, they're always, they look like they're always ready to pounce on anything. I mean, some of these eagles are so strong. I, I've seen, um, I don't know if it's true, but some eagles are so strong. They can eat, I, I have, seen in the past not recently pictures images of eagles large eagles coming down and picking up um, small dogs flying away with the little dogs their their strength is enormous and so when you think of an eagle you're like oh, that's not really much strength no you you should see some of these eagles they can come and swoop down pick up a small dog fly away i don't know what they do with the dog probably eat it or tear it apart and give it to its um, chicks. I don't know. But I've seen some amazing things that these eagles can do. And so the imagery here is God is going to supply you and me awesome strength. We're going to be able to go up, navigate around the circumstances. There's nothing that's going to be in our way. Just like an eagle, there's nothing that the eagle can't get over because it can soar. All he has to do is expand its wings and fly right over it. And when you have that in mind and you have the enormous strength, when you see what they're capable of doing, that's the imagery we get when we wait on the Lord. The promise here is that we would get this renewed strength, but it's contingent upon us waiting on God, not being in a hurry, not being rushed, not being trying to do this by tomorrow. Lord, you need to do this by tomorrow, the end of the day. His timing is best. We may think we know best, but not when we compare ourselves to God. Do you Have you named all the stars? God has said, I've named all the stars. And when you, I remember in philosophy class, when I was uh, doing my um, final exam, how, who made God or how did the universe come into existence? I, I gave a, a presentation of why I thought the universe had a start, a beginning. But then I also started to draw from some of the things that I got from Answers in Genesis. And back then it was called ICR, Institute Creation Research. I was able to get some great information from them. The largest star that we can see with a high powered telescope um, is called Alpha Centauri. I think it's Alpha Centauri or Alpha Centaurus or one of the one of those. I forgot the the full name, but the the point is is that when you cut it in half, you can put like two hundred thousand Earths inside 
the star that's 3,000 3, light years away. That's how vast and the magnitude of God's love. That kind of love, ladies and gentlemen, is embracing and protecting you so that when you hurt, he hurts. He senses it too because you're his child. He knows what you go through. He knows when you're nervous. He knows when you're scared. He knows when you're bitter. He knows when you're hurt. And all of that does not go past his omniscience. He knows what he's doing. And he says, look, I love you. If you ever doubt that, please remember what I did for you 2,000 years ago. We celebrated the resurrection of Christ just Sunday. And we have to always default to that when we start doubting God's love. And I know most of you don't doubt his love, but sometimes Satan can hit us in the gut to make us get distracted. And so we take our eyes off of Bible doctrine. We no longer focus on his word. We're focused more on how we feel. I feel lousy. I feel like I, I don't want to do this anymore. And when we get like that, that's more of a relationship issue with God. That's not his problem. That's not my problem. That's nobody else's problem. I, I'm sorry I'm going to step on your toes, but it's your problem. If you feel distant from God, it's not because he left. It's because you left. He will never abandon or leave you. If one of you is prodigal, if, if someone is prodigal, it's never God. God is never prodigal. He's always had his arms open for you. He's always there for you. You may not always agree with his timing. You may not always agree with how he does things, what he says, what he mandates, but he's still in charge. He's still the boss. And so we have to comply with his will, his ways, his commands, his mandates, his doctrine. And when we do, it's to our advantage. Why do I say that? Because it's things like what you're seeing on your screen. He will supply you with strength. He will supply you with wings. He will, you'll be able to mount up with wings like eagles. You'll be able to run and not be weary, walk and not faint. In other words, you'll be able to walk or move without fainting because sometimes the idea in the tail end of 31 is sometimes you can't even move. You can't even walk without having to faint because uh, I go home and I, it's starting the whole problem again. I have to go back home and here I got to deal with her again. I got to deal with him again. I got to deal with the kids again. I got to deal with this issue again. And he knows that. That's why this verse is in view. That's why this verse is in, included in the Bible, because God knew in eternity past, we would need something like this. We need to study this and to be reminded of this very passage so that we can mount up like eagles. We can run. We can walk and not pass out or faint. So that's how, that tells me, and it should tell you, that there are people that we might know now that are on the verge of fainting because they have so much stuff in their life, and they have not learned how to wait on God. They have not learned how to trust God. They might be able to say all the right words and say the right things, go through the motions, but that's that's religion. You can say the right things, do the same right things, but get wood, hay, and stubble. So God knows the heart. God knows the soul. God knows what's really going on the inside. <clears throat> no one else might. Your family might not know, but God certainly knows. And one way, one descriptive of a person who is not trusting God is a person who is always weary, a person who is always about to faint, as clearly seen in 31. So when you take those into consideration, then you see that, okay, this is what I'm short on. This is what I need to do. You make adjustment in your life. You do things that will comply with his word. Then you'll have power, horsepower, as I've often said, horsepower to run, horsepower to walk and not faint. Do you need that? If you do, learn how to wait on the Lord, because that's the missing component. That's the missing link in the strength, weakness, or strength walk issue. You do that, you're going to be fine. So having said that, what time is it now? Okay, it's about, it, it is time. So why don't we do this? Let us close in a word of prayer, and we'll call it a night, okay? Thank you for bearing with my multiple preaching. I sometimes get like that and I don't mean to, but sometimes I just, I want to run and not be weary. I want to walk and not faint, I guess you can say.
So I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And so now I have this all this strength. I get to share it with you all. And uh, hopefully you don't mind. So having said Can I add something before you pray, sure. I just want to add something here. Sure, that is. Everything that was discussed tonight, everything that uh, the participants added and what you said were so on point. And every time I wanted to ask a question, you, you guys actually answered uh, oh. for me already. But I just want to point out, yeah. because we were talking about believers mostly tonight. Right. But if you look at the totality of all these verses, uh -huh. okay, for the class, for people who are shy or feel that they're inadequate to be a bold witness mm -hmm. or feel that they can't find the right words when they want to talk to an unbeliever, these verses are actually witness that they open up and introduce. Right way to explain the salvation plan right um and it but it also opens up when people ask you why are you not freaking out or upset about this problem yeah these verses actually can be turned around and explain to them why you're not freaking out right. the other thing that i notice here is that it's also the verses are also good to introduce an unbeliever to our classes and say, hey, I am calm about this because I learned this from my Bible doctrine classes. So why don't you give a listen, mm, you know, to in and join us. And therefore, you can understand why we have a relaxed mental attitude and you'll be able to uh, receive the happiness of God. That's it, you're going to learn how to do this if you come and give a listen. Excellent. Or, or tune in and give a lesson, a listen to our classes. You gave you gave us an idea now. Now we can get to test that out during the week. <laughs> so thank you, Gladys. That's a great way to close up our class. So why don't we close in a word of prayer? And then I will see you all on what? Sunday, I guess, if you're online Sunday. And we'll resume our revelation study. So let's close in a word of prayer. And then we'll call it a night. Thank you. Father, thank you as always for loving us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for uh, allowing us to have salvation that's rooted in your son, Jesus Christ. There's no way we could have done this on our own. Uh, we're not in our sins anymore. We are in Christ. We're no longer in Adam. We're in Christ. And as such, we are sons and daughters of yours, which tells us that we have this um, special relationship with you. We are not enemies of the cross. We are believers. We are children of God. We have every reason to declare to a world that is dying in their sins that you love them. We know that your desire is none should perish. And so, Father, in the sense, it should be our desire as well. Because we love you, you love us, it would make sense that we would uh, go out and tell people about your son, Jesus Christ, so that they too can have life everlasting. So if we have an opportunity, I pray that we would uh, be nudged by God, the Holy Spirit, that he would show us that here's an, a golden opportunity to make a difference. Help us to be uh, faithful to you and to your word. Help us to create time so that we can get to know you more each and every week, each and every day when time in the Machado. And uh, so we thank you, Father, for this opportunity for us to examine your word and keep everyone safe until we meet again. And I pray that you would just place a wall of fire around each person as a form of protection against the adversary in any ill elements that might uh, uh, cause someone's health to be compromised. Right. Everybody healthy. And we ask and pray all of these things in Christ's matchless name in which we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Good Bye, night. Lord. Bye, Ruben. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Bye, Winston, Thank you for your Thank you, God bless everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank